Wilms, double team, pass cross court. Flagger, it is three blocked out of bounds by Woolridge. First for Woolridge, three. Got it. Ryan Woolridge with his second three in a mean green uniform. Woolridge for a drive from the left side, scoops and scores. Picked up by Woolridge, backs out, NBA three to beat the shot clock, and he got it! 28 feet! My name is Ryan Woolridge. Um, I play for North Texas basketball. Originally, Ryan started uh, a love for all sports early. Uh, one of the things we always wanted to do was get them actively involved in, in sports, all, him and his sister. He would coach my basketball teams, and that's really kind of like how I failed in the basketball. He was my coach all the way up until like fifth, fifth, sixth grade. We moved into the YMCA and they allowed him to play in the seven and eight year old division as long as I was coaching. That's where we kind of started bonding together as father and son to, to start coaching and playing the basketball and his love for it grew from there. I thought it was awesome that they had that bond. Um, it was just nice watching them have that creation together. As a father, it was, it was outstanding because it allowed me an opportunity with, with my first son to actually bond and have a common interest, so it was great for me. Well, I guess originally Ryan, Ryan was heavily involved in the AAU process in basketball and Pop Warner in football. And once he got to middle school, uh, he moved to wide receiver on the football team. And uh, he realized he didn't like getting hit that much. <laughs> so, that, so that was an opportunity for him to kind of focus on, on his true love, which was basketball. I just, so I kind of chose basketball because like, it combined every sport into one. And I just loved the game of basketball. I, I always wanted to play. Bounce rolls to the court picked up there by Reese. Over to Woolridge, wants the quick three, and he got it with 14 seconds. So much for the last shot of the half. She had kind of hinted it to me, but I really didn't like understand what was happening. And then my mom just came out and told me, and then that's when I was just devastated. Just one day she did a, a self-examination, noticed that she had a lump. Uh, we immediately uh, scheduled an appointment. She went in and we're thinking, oh, well, you know, she's, she's healthy. She goes in and she finds out she has it. Uh, and then we just process it from there. Ryan's not very emotional, so you would never, like his coaches didn't even know anything was even going on with me. Well, I had a coach uh, tell me once, he says, this kid plays hard all the time. You can't tell whether you're 15 points up or 15 points down. His attitude and his approach is the same. And that's him. That's, that's Ryan. Um, at first it was really tough because I was just like, we I'll be warming up and I was just looking at stands and only seeing my dad and my sister and stuff like that. It was very devastating to get that news, but immediately I had to think about my kids and um, the time and area that we're in now. Um, okay, what's the next step? I need to keep going because we're going into basketball season and really that was my thing. I need to be over this um, before we get there so that I can keep going, but it did sit me down for um, quite some time. Um, it was kind of tough. Cause we were, we um we actually had moved into Man the house in Mansfield, and we had to go back and forth, and uh, she really couldn't do too much, so it was it was kind of hard. I explained, and he went with it. He was right there. He wanted to to read up on it. He got on the internet to learn more about it. He wanted to um, be a part of the process but he was right there every step of the way. And my thing was, you have to keep going. Life doesn't stop. Keep playing, keep going. I didn't want to see her struggle, basically, I, don't, I guess. Uh, so I kind of wanted to help her out. I didn't want to be, like, not involved. I wanted to do something to help. Two years before, she actually got confirmation that she was in remission. So it was a long, drawn-out process. An uh, exciting feeling to play in front of her again. Uh, I didn't really have to like, tell her all the stuff I did. She could actually see what I'm doing, how I improved since the last time she saw me.
Sometimes you don't get what you want in life when you want it. I was actually supposed to go on a visit to Texas. Like, and then the weekend of the coaches had got fired and I was supposed to commit, but um, it didn't happen. So uh, one of the coaches was Coach Springman and he went to San Diego. So that's kind of like how I went to San Diego because I kind of followed him. Sight unseen, uh, which probably is not the best uh, decision he made. Uh, I was there for a couple of weeks, um, and then he had told me about the news, and yeah, it was kind of like a deja vu, but it was it was kind of worse because I couldn't really do anything. I was helpless, basically. I couldn't really couldn't I couldn't really help him out at all. I was actually diagnosed with prostate cancer. Um, it just hit me out of the blue. Um, had just had a physical a year before, so for me it was just like uh, an eye eye opening experience. You know, he knew that he was sick, but he didn't know really what was going on um, because he was busy with the different recruiting processes. I thought it was just like a, a common sickness or something like that because we went to San Diego on a visit and he didn't go. I really like at the time I was like kind of confused, but. I didn't, it really didn't cross my mind that he was too sick. So we wanted to make sure it was his decision, not a decision he made based on something that was happening to someone else in the family. So uh, we tried to make sure that we explained it to him in a way that would allow him to continue to go and, and flourish. Um, he, got out to Cal he got out to California. We we're thinking the sun and the sand, he's going to love it. And with him, it was always, you know, a family first. Trying to explain that what, what I had and what I went through, what Dad have, it's completely different. Um, that was like the overall for Ryan. It's like, I've got to come home. He didn't see it like that. So I went to the school year, and then we were there for like, I want to say like three weeks, and I was just like, no, nah, I can't even take it anymore. So I just uh, I just called up my dad on the phone, and I was just like, uh, I'm trying to come home. And he was like, I'll be there in the morning. taking on a San Diego team that most fans aren't familiar with. Well, they're in the West Coast Conference, and interestingly enough, two of their best three-point shooters are sophomores from the Metroplex. They thought they would have another local product, and for four weeks last fall, they did have Ryan Woolrich, and he transferred back home to North Texas after just four weeks with some family issues involved there. This, this experience has definitely brought us closer. Um, the first one, it brought us very close and then the, the second the second um, occurrence definitely brought us like we were all like on the same page basically uh, we knew at any moment anything could happen uh, we were just together it means for me personally a second chance at life um, there's more you can get more out of it um, don't just settle um, live each day to its fullest because you never know when it's going to be your last. Um, but it just makes you re really appreciate what you have and who you have in your life. Um, the things you have, what you've And for me, it's I, I, I look for cancer as a uh, it's it's a uh, it's a curse and a blessing, all rolled up into one. Uh, as an individual, it, it's something that totally attacks your body and attempts to destroy the very life from you. But it, it's an opportunity as well because it allows you to to basically recalibrate where you are in life and your commitment to your family, your commitment to yourself, and focus on what's important to you. Uh, you know, we go through life all the time, and, and a lot of times we don't stop to smell the roses. We don't stop to look at the sunrise. Uh, cancer to me is two things. It's a uh, breaking point and a bridge. Uh, it's, a, it's a breaking point because like before it all happens and stuff like that, you're just down, depressed, 
um, you don't really know what's gonna happen. You you can assume, but you truly don't know. But um, after you actually fight through it and recover and stuff like that, then that's why it's a bridge to, to happiness and joy and, and you just, um, it's like a it's like a world of relief. So, in watching that go through, and then eventually watching her fight her way through it, uh, that just gave them an opportunity to know that anything's possible, uh, as long as you believe and, and you believe in God, and, and as long as you you have faith in in, in the process, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a blessing, um, cause they it's just it's just like a. It's just like old times, basically. Um, they show up to the games early, yelling, happy, sad. No matter if we win or lose, they're just always there for me. Uh, it's just just joy. Like I just can see the joy on their face, and I can actually see it um, by being so close. It, it was like a match made in heaven for me to come back home. And as much as last week, when we were sitting there talking, he was like, you know what? This is where I need to be. So we're excited about his opportunities.